the hummingbird painting. He, he is a Rufus hummingbird. That's his name. Okay. Rufus. He's got the red uh, well, throat. Not only that, but his whole body is, uh, they're all different. Okay. Uh, even the tail feathers and everything. So we won't go into that. We just say he's a Rufus. And anybody that knows, knows I'm right, you know, when they look at him. Okay. And anyone else, they don't know the difference anyway, so mm -hmm. why bother? So. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. What's this is pointer? Like, it's just, I, I was watching our film, and I'm all hands. Okay. All over the place. Right. And I don't like the way it looked. I don't know that this would look any better. I think I it does. Look. Yeah. Do you think it does? Yeah, because if you're going to touch it, you, you talk about wearing the gloves, which we're going to do tomorrow. Yeah. And you talk about <coughs> um, touching the different well, I paper or paint. Just aiming at it, you know. I won't be rolling around on it. Well, that's what I'm saying. But you know, inadvertently, you know, you could. But yeah. with this, that's pretty cool that you yeah. have that pointer. Yeah, it gets to be very big if I want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, then I have a laser pointer. Right, okay. Same thing, yeah. But anyway, uh, so let me do this real quick. I just want to show this is the hummingbird. Um, you, you saw that guy in Furlong Road, right? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, <coughs> uh, I was. Shall I tell the story? Tell the story. Okay. Oh, goodness. I enjoyed living there. We lived there for a couple of years, I think. Uh, I'd have to look for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, this one morning, and usually it was somewhere around 8 o'clock in the morning, maybe 7.30 to 8 in that time bracket. So if you know where the sun is at that time, it's a terrible thing <laughs> that I have to do these things. Uh, I know where the sun is supposed to be at a given time of the morning. Uh, I was walking up the road, Furlong Road, and it's just a little narrow road, country road, coming from our little country cottage. And uh, as I walked up there, I happened to look down on the, the uh, overgrown side, my left side. And I noticed it went down very steep. And I said, geez, I wonder what's down there. And I looked down and I saw, oh, there's a grotto down there. And a lot of people don't know what a grotto is, but there was a grotto down there and okay. I recognized it. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I thought, well, if there's a grotto down there, I better go down and look at it. How many Makes people sense. go down and look at grottos today? <laughs> <laughs> Not too many. So I went down carefully and got down there on the level, and what what did I find? I found water, like a little stream was going, and it was about an inch deep, traveling over the rocks which were there, and they were as slick as can be, because this had happened for years and years and years, and there was also depressions in the rock. And then I found out days later from other people that these are called Indian holes or potholes. We call them potholes in the road. Mm -hmm. But they call these Indian potholes because they actually went there and used them to dip out the water and so forth. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. You see, you learn a lot from strangers. Yeah. They're worthwhile. They're worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one of the things that uh, I found out before in being uh, taped was the tape didn't pick it up loud enough. And I hope it's picking it up loud enough because my voice seems to just float away and disappear mm -hmm. because I, I don't have a strong voice. Okay, I brought speakers to hook onto your computer to show that whoever listens to these things, um, they can raise the volume so that they can hear it. And, oh, good. You know, the, the base one that I put up was fine. It was good. Okay. So maybe your speaker settings aren't good, and I'll, I'll double check those. Okay. But 
Yeah, this this little guy works. Uh, it picks up well enough. Okay. Um, okay. And so I'll make sure. Well, you know, I'm not projecting. I'm just talking with you. Right. And if I start projecting, then I am not myself again. Right. And and uh, I think it's going to be fine. Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, so long as you don't whisper. Yeah. No, I'm not going to whisper. Okay. This is meant to be heard That's around right. the world. That's right. Um, so I get down to the level of the water, and it's all covered by brush and trees, and it's very, very beautiful down there. It is so tranquil. And that's redwoods, right? Yeah. It's all redwood forest in that little neighborhood. That's well, right. That, that whole area. The whole area is yeah. uh, California redwood trees, and mm -hmm. we lived among them. And uh, it's a beautiful experience because you walk out and you can smell them in the morning. Mm -hmm. And in the nighttime, too. <laughs> <laughs> they're nice. They're beautiful. Yeah, they yeah. really are. And uh, so anyway, got down there. And as a matter of fact, talking about redwoods, that comes into play here in my painting. As I sat there, just being calm and being tranquil in the setting of the running water and the surrounding of all of the trees, it is so beautiful and relaxing, and then all of a sudden you hear a buzz, bzzz, and it's, wow, that's a hummingbird. And he came as far away as we are, because he didn't trust me yet. <laughs> and he looked me over, <coughs> and he says, well, you don't look bad. <laughs> and so he went and he got himself a drink. Okay. And he hung around, and I think he might have been eating the bugs in the water also. Okay. You know, because they have right. a long tongue. Mm -hmm. And it goes, you, did you know that the tongue wraps around their skull? No. And it bees, and yeah. Oh, wow. It comes through the back, and goes up the top, and it's the letter Y. And then it comes through the mouth. Oh, and wow. And it can be extended. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. interesting. Huh. Uh, so, anyway, he watched me, and uh, I watched him, and then I thought, well, I would like to do a Rufus Hummingbird, which he was. And I had looked him up in the book to find out which hummingbird he was, and he was, sure enough, a, a Rufus. And, uh, and he happened to be a male. And I didn't know this until I started researching it. Then I started making drawings of him because I thought I'd do a nice painting. And what I had to do was go back the following day because I didn't get enough done. And sure enough, he decided, oh, this is breakfast time, so <laughs> he came again. And I said, wow, this is pretty nice. And he didn't fear me at all. He just came down and he saw me just drawing. And I looked at him and I looked at the ferns that were here. And I looked at the redwood trees. And I said, where's that water coming from? And it was seepage coming out of the side of the hill. And it had a lip right in here that was only about an inch and made a little waterfall, and I thought, God, that's beautiful. <laughs> I like that. And then it went into a depression, one of these potholes, mm -hmm. and it made a regular little swimming pool for this bird. He didn't swim in it, but he did eat out of it. Mm -hmm. And the sun would catch it and would show you there was a depression in here. And you would see where the shadow for the hill was and how the, the little waterfall would come there. Mm -hmm. And you'd hear it. That was a beautiful thing. So between hearing the music of the waterfall and hearing the buzzing of the wings, <laughs> and then when he would stop, and he did. He didn't stop until he landed. Right. And then he would eat. And it was just such a quiet place, and there was never a wind. Mm -hmm. 
And then I looked to see the foliage around, and I found that, oh, there's ferns all over the place, just loaded with ferns. And then I said, what is this hanging down into the water? Oh, that's one of the dead ferns. Yeah, and it started to curl. You can see it curls mm -hmm. and comes down, and it does it on its own. Nobody helps it. It <laughs> finds its way down to the water and just curls and looks beautiful. And these are the fresh ones. Yeah. And if you look closely, I even did the little seeds on the back. Oh, nice. They have sure. little seeds, and they're in the painting, too. Okay. Uh, but you have to look carefully. Right. Uh, this has so much natural uh, things in it. Mm -hmm. uh, up in here is all the redwood trees. Now, this is lichen over here growing on the rocks. Okay. Uh, this is the part that I had fun. Here is a dead redwood tree pine cone, mm -hmm. uh, pine cone, redwood cone. Right. He's not pine. He's not he's pine. Redwood. He's redwood. Yes. <laughs> okay. This particular one, I picked off the ground and put it in my hand and looked at it and I painted this. Oh, nice. The same size as in my hand. Okay. Exactly the same size. No <laughs> bigger, no smaller. Yep. But then I says, well, that's very, very nice, but it doesn't explain how the cone is made. And I think that the viewer should be told how the cone is made. So what I did is I took this and brought it close to my face and made a close-up of it okay. with a magnifying glass. Wow. And this is a duplicate of this made closer so okay. that you, the viewer, could enjoy it. Ah and say that's a redwood cone. This is a redwood cone. And even the the uh, little, they're not leaves, they're uh, little blades, mm -hmm. uh, needles, some people call them needles, but I'll call them blades. Coming off, these are the actual size for this. Okay. And these are the actual size for okay. this. Uh, anyway, so I accomplished it and I was very happy. Uh, the bird was very happy. We spent four days together, each time <laughs> around 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, before our coffee, mm -hmm. both of us. And then at the end of that time period, which is probably uh, about 10 or 15 minutes, he would fly away and I would go home and paint him. And uh, we both agreed that was a good way to do it. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And so the last time I was there, which was the fourth day, I told him, you know, I'm almost finished with your painting now, and uh, we're going to have to stop meeting this way. <laughs> and he says, all right. Okay. And he says, but I'll remember you. Goodbye. And he goes, Zzzz, <laughs> on the way. And that's what we did. That's really nice. And that's how this got painted. Yeah. You got your little cavern here, which is the hole that allows the water seepage to come in. Mm -hmm. It came in. It got caught in the in the bowl, and then it runs off in this direction to our left, about one inch or less, over the, the gray rocks that are as smooth as can be, okay. and it looks so beautiful. Mm. And you can hear the tinkle of the sounds of the water. Very nice. Yeah. And that's the story behind this particular painting. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I'll put the... Oh, show the back as well. <clears throat> so the back has all the information. Furlong Road, Sebastopol, California, by Jack Feldman, 1985. It's a 9x12 um, morning visit of Rufus at the Indian Wash Hole on Furlong Road up from Shirley and Jack's house. Yeah, hold it Very nice. To the and camera. what... This is a board... So what, this is masonite board rather than a canvas. So it's still acrylic, but it looks so smooth and glossy on this. Uh, it's beautiful. 